So guys, I'm not doing anything different here. Think about when we looked at our substantive procedures for auditing any balance or class of transaction. The first thing we said we needed to do was consider what IFRA says. And then when I know what IFRA says, I need to then go and test whether they have complied. And in order for me to test the compliance, I would use my assertions. Because my assertions help me to make sure I test all of the ways in which they might not comply by maybe understating or overstating, putting things in too early, putting things in too late. So the assertions help me to make sure every, every way in which it could be misstated has been tested. But how do I know if it's misstated? Because they haven't complied with IFRS. So that's all I'm doing here, is I first want us to look at what IFRA says about when you need to record events after reporting period, and then I'm going to go and audit whether they have complied. Okay, so guys, these events, very important, take place after the date of the financial statements, so after year end. But why would they then need to be considered in the year-end financials? Well, sometimes the events take place after, but they had conditions that were present at year-end. So even though the events is taking place after year-end, they had a condition that existed at year-end, and so by substance, over form, they should be recording something. So this is where that very nice finance term comes in, substance over form. The substance means it needs to be recorded in the financials. And so guys, if that's the case, if the conditions existed at your end, you have an adjusting event, which means the financial statements need to be amended to take into account the events. That is when conditions exist at year end. However, you may have events after year end where the conditions arose after year end. So, the substance says it doesn't need to be recorded. In the current financial statements, because the essence of that event takes place next year, so they need to be recorded in next year's financials, which is the nice kind, because that makes sense to us. If it happens next year, it should be recorded next year. And those guys are then obviously your non-adjusting. They don't need to adjust the financials for these because the events and the conditions and the substance of it all arose after year end. But as with accounting, in its true essence, they always need to make things complicated for us. And so there are two exceptions to this rule, where even though the condition arose post year end and the event takes place post year end, it needs to still be an adjusting event. At least there needs to be some sort of adjustment on the financials. Maybe not the entire event, but something needs to be amended in the financials for this event. And guys, the two exceptions, if the event is material. So even though the conditions arose after year end, and so the substance of that transaction is it must be recorded after year end, but because it is material, the users for these financials might want to know what's happening in the next year. And so if it is an event that is material, the only adjustment that needs to happen to the financials is that they need to disclose the nature 
of the event and any financial implications. That's it. So they don't have to go and do a complete adjustment like in the first instance where the conditions existed at your end. They just have to do a minor adjustment which is just disclosure in the financials. The second one is a major adjustment where if the event that arose after the end affects the going concern assumption of the company so they actually no longer can continue then they need to actually amend the financial statements in entirety so that they are prepared on a different basis maybe the liquidation basis. They cannot be prepared on the going concern basis. And guys, this is where we're going to look at later when we do going concern. It's an assessment that you have to make at the end of your financial period for the next 12 months. So when they make that assessment and they say, yes, we are a going concern and they prepare the financials on that basis, if after the end something happens and that basis is wrong, that 12 month assessment is wrong, the financials need to be restated to the correct basis because that foreseeable future of them being able to continue is no longer relevant. Okay, so this is the accounting of it guys. If conditions existed at your end, adjusting the entire transaction needs to be recorded. If conditions arose post your end, it is a non-adjusting, barring two exceptions. If it is a material event, they need to just disclose this event. They don't have to adjust the financials to record the transaction. It's just disclosure. If it is affecting the going concern, they have to amend the financial statements. Let's go have a look at some examples. So, I've got you. The client's year end is 28 February 2019, so very important to note that. Number one, on 1 April 2019, so I can see now this is post year end, so I have a post reporting date. The company received notice that they were being sued by one of their previous employees who felt he was unlawfully dismissed on the 15th of March 2019. So also this was post year end. So the event is that they are being sued and that takes place post reporting. The conditions arose on the 15th of March, which is post-reporting. That is the reason why they are being sued. So we have a non-adjusting. However, consideration needs to be made as to whether this is going to be material, because if it is going to be material, they will have to disclose. Also, if it is going to affect the going concern, they would have to then adjust the basis. Okay, but as that stands, non-adjusting. Second question, the company's only customer, so only is very important, went bankrupt on the 15th of April 2019. So once again, we have a post reporting date. The event is that he is being bankrupt. Conditions. We don't have much information, so potentially from our perspective, the condition's taking place now. So they are now going to lose this customer. But it is their only customer. And so they are going to lose their only source of revenue. And so even though this is post-reporting and the events would indicate that it is non-adjusting, this could affect the growing concern. How else are they going to get revenue if their only customer closes down? And so as a result, this will become an adjusting in terms of amending the basis.
of the preparation of the financials. So guys, here were two simple examples. It does get a little bit complicated because sometimes you've got your assets that require an estimate and information comes about after your end, which can affect the valuation at your end. Like if NRV changes after your end, but there haven't been significant reasons for that, then ultimately using that could affect your balance at your end. But we'll look at examples later. Let's go and do subsequent events.